Hey guys, J-Man here, and I'm going to show you how I do dynamic input switching inside of Unreal Engine 4. This is so you can show different buttons inside of widgets depending on what kind of input the user is currently using at that point. Um, and it will be able to detect when they've switched to a different method and show a different type of widget or a different image, whatever you'd like. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first I opened up a new project. Uh, this is just the default third person example blueprint. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to create a new player controller. And I'm going to call this custom player controller. Let's save it and let's make sure that we can actually use it. So let's you go to third person game mode in the world settings and make sure that we override the player controller class to our custom player controller. Now you don't necessarily have to do this inside of a player controller. You could do this inside of the character blueprint. It's just that I like to use the player controller. Gets it out of my hair. So the first thing we're going to want to do is create a new variable and I'm going to call this is using gamepad and make sure that's a boolean. So we are going to get an any key event. So just go right click and type in any key and make sure that that any key event is set to uh, not consume input and to not override parent binding. That way it'll just detect any key and won't actually do anything to mess up uh, whenever your player is trying to do something. So let's drag off of the key and find is gamepad key. And from the return value, let's create a branch. And if it's true, let's set is using gamepad. And let's make sure that's checked. And let's copy paste. And for false, we're going to make sure that it's unchecked. And that's basically the hardest part. But to make this easier to uh, use inside of widgets and things, so we don't have to cast every single time, we are going to create a new library. So let's open up a new folder. I'm going to call it libraries. And let's right click blueprints and blueprint function library. And I'm going to call this BPL. Gamepad, that sounds good. Now, when you first create a uh, library, it will create a new function for you, but let's rename it. I'm going to call it Detect Gamepad. We're going to want to make sure that we have an output, and the output is going to be is using gamepad because I am not creative. So the first thing is we are going to cast eh, to our custom player controller, our object. We want to get player controller and then as our custom player controller we're going to want to get is using gamepad and from there 
I'm going to create another little branch. And if it's true, we're going to check is using gamepad. Then we're going to copy and paste this return node, move to false, and we are going to uncheck it. Then compile and save. And we are done with our library. That wasn't so difficult. Let's make sure everything is saved. Next, we are going to create a, a new widget just so that we can get these on the screen. So we are going to right click user interface and widget blueprint. And I'm going to call this sample HUD. And to make sure that we have something to place in our HUD, I uh, went over to open game art um, and grabbed a couple of sample buttons. Save all again because we are using Unreal Engine. And the second you forget to save something will be the second that Unreal Engine decides to crash on you. So um, this is just a sample, so let's just create a horizontal box. Let's uh, drag it down to our canvas. Uh, let's make it a little bigger, I guess. Let's create some text. Drag it into here. Then let's grab an image. And also drag it into our horizontal box. Now since this is a default template, the only input we have is for jump. So that is what we are going to call this little text block. And for this image, we are going to call it key image because that is going to be the image of the key that the user needs to press for their input. So let's um, make this look a little prettier. Vertical alignment to the top. Um, let's align it to the center. Uh, and let's make sure there's padding to the left, about 20 pixels. All right, that's perfect. Now, inside of key image, we're going to go to appearance, open up the brush, and instead of um, selecting an image here, we're going to click bind and create binding. I don't like these uh, default names, so I'm just going to rename it. But you don't have to do anything if you don't want to. Um, you don't have to listen to me. I'm not your dad. Anyway, we are going to want to detect gamepad. And so when you drag off to the beginning of the function, you can see that we now have access to our little blueprint library. So we can call detect gamepad directly without having to worry about casting again. And it makes everything nice and clean and saves you a bunch of time. So we're going to find is using gamepad. We are going to create a new little branch. And if it's true, we are going to set brush resource to texture. And for the brush, we're going to pull that out and promote to a local variable. And I am going to call that current image, though you don't really have to call it anything. I'm going to copy and paste this down here for false as well. I'm going to connect these up to our return value. Um, and if you wanted, you could just take current image. 
select it up to, to both of these if you want some clean blueprints. But just make sure that current image is uh, wired up to your return value. So if it's true, we are going to set this texture to the A button. And if it's false, we are going to set it to the space bar. Compile and save. And we're basically done. Um, but just to see how it'll look, we're going to go into the image. And I'm going to create a little A button and assign that. And sure, that's just fine. So let's get our sample HUD on the screen. Let's go into our third person character blueprint and the lovely default event graph. And let's create a begin play event. And on begin play, we're going to want to create a widget make sure the class is set to our sample HUD, then drag off the return value, add to viewport. Fantastic. So now our third person character, as soon as uh, we start playing, our sample HUD will pop up on the screen. Let's go ahead and save all. And our player controller is set to our custom player controller. Everything is wired up, so let's see what we've got. And we can see that now we have our little jump notification up in the top telling us that uh, we can jump using the space bar. But if I decide to move to a gamepad, and there we go. I just started using a gamepad to control the character and we can see that it's changed to an A button. And you can do this as much as you'd like. And keyboard, gamepad, keyboard, gamepad. So you can pretty much uh, wire that up to any widget you'd like in order to showcase proper inputs depending on you know what kind of input method the, uh, the player's using. There are probably better methods to do this, but this is the easiest method that I've discovered, and it's the one that I generally use in my projects. But hey, if you have a better idea, please um, make sure to let me know, and um, I can make a follow-up video and, and show an even better way to do this. So thank you everyone for watching, um, and I'll catch you guys next time.